Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back. Streaming live from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Well, he's back. <laughs> this time he has innovated his program to extend to man's best friend. And I must say, I am a proud owner of a fur baby myself. And I can't wait to hear what Anthony Crisco has to say about his Petting with Purpose, Fascinating for Canines program. Anthony, you look after so many um, people's fascia and fascia health that it only makes sense that you look after their best friend's fascia as well. But before we get started, Anthony, please share with us a little bit or a brief about what is fascia and what is fascia all about? Well, the fascia was classified in the year 2012 as the largest organ in our bodies. And it's not just exclusively to human beings. Fish have it, dogs, bats, cats, rats, lions, tigers, bears. Oh, my! Every <laughs> animal has fascia. And if you even look at when we cut an orange or an apple or any fruit, if you cut it open, you notice there are patterns, these fractal patterns that represent the fascia in the fruit. Okay? So, for example, if I cut an orange into slices, what separates the juicy orangey stuff from the rest of the orange? That white thing they call the zit? Well, that's similar to how our body is separated by the fascia. And again, it's not just exclusive to humans. It's also for every animal. So fascia not only is it the largest organ, but it's the most neurologically active tissue in the body. It transports electrical current, hormones, water, emotions, everything. And now we're, we're what, 10 years on since, 11 years on since it was classified in, or, as an organ. And now everybody's talking about fascia. So they're a little late to the party, but hey, better late than never. I'm, a proud, I'm proud to say that I'm part of the uh, Fascia Research, Science, Research Society. More importantly, I'm one of the founding members of the Fascia Research Society. So I was talking about this stuff before it was even a thing. So that's what the fascia is doing nowadays. It's everywhere and it's everything. Wow. I didn't realize that. I guess everybody, everything has fascia. I mean, who would think that even a fish had fascia, right? And how blessed are we that, Anthony, you reside here in Hawaii and we have you at a phone call away, a fingertip away or a class away that we can just call or visit anywhere you are that we can learn more about our fascia and how to take care of it. And now we're going to talk about even our pets. And that's very exciting to me. Someone told me that that's your, uh, what your focus is on this, this day. And I thought, you know what, you got to come because everybody has a best friend with four legs, I should say. So um, I gather that you were able to take a picture of this uh, animal, this, this crazy animal, which is a dog, at the Body Works exhibit when you were in Berlin, Germany, working on the fascia net plastination project. Is this what gave you the idea for your Petting with Purpose program? As a matter of fact, it is. And if you look at this, this beautiful specimen here, this is an actual dog where they plastinated the protein tissues by keeping it soaked in a bath of silicone under pressure, at which point the water was squeezed out and the silicone was pressurized into the cells. And then they shaped it to so have this pose. And then they bake it in an oven to basically turn this animal tissue into a plastinated specimen. And the idea came because I'm like, wow, Look at all these muscles on the dog. Look at all these other fascial structures on the dog. Hmm. I know dogs that get cancer. I know dogs that get arthritis and dementia and they go blind and all these other issues. Well, if I was have been able to help so many humans around the world with their digestion, with their breathing, with their aches and pains, with their overall demeanor with their PTSD, then I said, why can't we do the same for our fur babies, our four-legged best friends? And that's how the idea came. I'm like, you know what? Dogs are fun. I've had dogs ever since I can remember. I know dogs and I know anatomy and I know fascia. 
why don't we bring this knowledge to the dog owners who all they know is this dog has nice coat and fur and I'm going to have his, I'm going to cut little, little, little things into his hair and dye his hair. Well, <laughs> there's more to a dog than just his coat. And that's what I want to do is help people's dogs live longer, live better at the same time, save a lot of money at the veterinarian. Wow. And we'll talk about that more later. Wow. And what you're doing is you're giving the dog and the pet owner a quality of life because we know we need each other. And so, wow, Anthony, <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, even that, that photo of that dog that you took, I mean, that in itself, people should study that more closely because that's pretty phenomenal in itself. What they did, how, to, how they reconstructed that to turn the light bulb on and you even brighter to say, you know what, we need to focus on our four-legged uh, four friends. So, you know, I know obviously a dog can't use your fashionator roller. So how does a petting with purpose workshop work, work with regards to the owners and their dogs? Well, that's a great question. We just had our latest petting with Pe uh, purpose workshop at Ali'i Animal Hospital here in Honolulu at their facility called Ali'i Animal Unleashed. Wow, I love it, I love it, Unleashed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a 10,000 square foot indoor doggy daycare facility, facility slash wow. resort. And uh, during the week, the dog owners bring their dogs to this daycare. So they're not at home alone while their parents are working all day. And uh, it's a great place for socialization, for having the dog just live a better life as well. But uh, I was able to use one of their smaller rooms because it is a little loud. They're all barking. They're all talking to each other. So we use the smaller rooms and the owners bring their dogs. And yes, in the beginning, some of the dogs were like shaking, like what's going on here? Other dogs, you can tell that they've just been uptight for many years. Well, what we do, I do a little PowerPoint in the beginning to highlight the anatomy, the lymphatic vessels, the lymph node locations of the animals. And it's very similar to us, right? The underarm, the neck, the abdomen, inside the inguinal area around the hip. And what I do is I teach the mommies and daddies of these dogs how to feel the stiffness in their dog's tissue. And if you look at this slide here, this is how it's broken down, right? We, we do the PowerPoint, right? And then we go over the lymphatic vessels, the deep anatomy, the superficial anatomy. Then we go through the hands-on component, which is the most important part. And I'll tell you, in some of these dogs, they're so stiff. Just when you touch them, they jump, right? And you can tell they're not used to that. Uh, as we go through the body though, right? We start from the hind quarters and work our way up through the abdomen, into the underarms and through the neck. And then we go back down the spine through their thoracolumbar fascia. And in the process, these dogs go from uptight and nervous to they're just relaxed, they're happy. They're calm, they're not barking or growling at the other dogs, they're not jumpy and just squirrely, they're just happy. And I would have to say the most important part, after we finish the class, all the dogs have to use the bathroom. And I was I, gonna say. <laughs> they go number two, like two or three times. <laughs> oh, hey, just like us, right? <laughs> just like when just I have like kids. Us. Rolling their abdomen, they're like, Anthony, the next morning I clogged my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and that is really a fact. I mean, and, and I know you make that statement in class and everyone kind of chuckles, but that's for real. When you take care of your fascia, your fascia takes care of you. <laughs> and being uh -huh. constipated is, is a big problem. And many people, as well as animals, our doggies and our cats have that issue. So to make them go regular, and to stimulate that uh, action and that reaction in their body, that is um, worth a million bucks right there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. If these animals could talk, they would be like, thank you, uncle. Thank you, uncle. But I'm, I'm sure they're like licking you all over. They must be happy and relaxed. And, you know, like humans, 
dogs uh, have PTSD as well. And so what you just mentioned, you know, their stiffness or their, their shyness or their jumpiness, it has a lot to do with some of the history some of these dogs have experienced. And you're there to roll it out, so to speak. Is that correct, Anthony? Absolutely right. And may I expound on this? I have a great story. Um, I didn't think that the image would be suitable <laughs> for today's presentation. However, let me tell you the story. <laughs> Go for Our it. friend's dog, she's a pit bull, okay? My son uh, took his socks off and the dog ate his entire sock. <laughs> oh. And so they were waiting for her to pass the sock out of her oh. side, but it didn't happen. So for an entire week, oh, yeah. the sock was in her digestive system. Okay. Uh, and they called me and said, Anthony, can you do your petting with purpose on on our dog? She hasn't pooped a sock out yet. I said, I'm uh, coming over. Uh, and it was Bailey. And uh, I did what I do. I worked on her abdominal space. And uh, the trick there is to go slow and wait for the dog to let you go deeper. So you have to wait until the muscles relax, at which point. I was able to get into the abdominal area, working through that area. And you want to know what happened? The next morning, she <laughs> regurgitated the sock. She threw up the sock from the <laughs> mouth. Now, what does that even mean? Well, what if I told you? I asked my friend, the veterinarian, I'm like, how much would it cost to have surgery to remove a sock? She says, oh, about four to $5,000. Yes, yes. So not only did we help this poor dog with her sock fetish, <laughs> not only did we help her get rid of the sock through her uh, mouth by vomiting it out, but yes. we see the family $4,000. Now, <laughs> the reason that's so important, I yes. want to give Ali'i Animal Hospital a shout out right now. Yes. Because they're the ones who are saying, you know what, Anthony? Bring your class to our customers and our patients. Yes. They're not just focusing on charging a lot of money for surgery. Yes, we want our customers to get the most of for their animal and with their animal. So wow. I can't be more grateful to Ali'i Animal Hospital and Dr. Joanna Cook and her business partner, Matt Malta, for yes. giving me the opportunity to teach my workshop in their beautiful facilities. They have them all over the island. Uh, Ali'i Animal Hospital, yes. And I'm giving a shout out because they deserve uh -huh. it. For sure. I mean, when a, when a clinic or a veterinarian uh, clinic can offer that, that their clients are as important as their, you know, income stream from business that they would not get, yeah, that they want to partner with you, that that is, of course, we should give them a shout out. And, you know, I looked at the picture and I think I know Joanna, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So uh, I just want to send kudos out to them as well, because they're partnering. They have a clinic, yes, but they found somebody like you. It's a, You're like a homeopathic uh, clinician working with them to help their clientele, their four-legged four -legged animals have a better quality of life. And that's, that's brilliant. I love that marriage, that partnership that you both have uh, acquired. So I look forward to going there as well and bringing my grace with me. So, you know, when you're in class, what format do you use to keep both the dog owners and the pets engaged? Well, um, first, you know, your, the owners have their dogs and they have we put mats out on the floor. And as you know, some dogs like to smell other dogs. Other <laughs> dogs like to not be anywhere near other dogs. So right. in the beginning, they kind of just they, in the beginning, they just kind of keep to themselves. But again, as we go through the class and then the massaging of the fascia, they start to let go of their inhibitions. They start to want to actually be more playful. Matter of fact, um, when I did my first class, my client Ron brought his dog. She's 14, all right? And you know, older dogs move a little slower. They don't have as much energy. And about midway, we took a bathroom break for the dogs. And Ron says, hey, you know, my dog, She's more playful. She has more energy just after a little bit of this fascinator thing. Wow. And wow. He, he wrote me a testimonial that we'll share later. It's amazing. 
So we'll share that when the time is ready. But the way we get them going is as we relax their fascia, again, they become more playful, not just with their owners, but with everyone else. And that's how it wow. works. So that means if you have a hyper Jack Russell, you shouldn't bring them to your class. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> they're going to go wild. They're going to go even more hyper. So, but, but then they'll be a happier, healthier hyper versus just hyper because that's who they are, right? So bring them. I totally believe in um, your fascinating um, system for myself, and I know that it has that same great effect on our, our pets. So I'm excited. I'm excited to find a class that I can join and bring my grace with me. That's so, right. Anthony, can you tell us what the effects both immediate and long-term are for the doggies that are lucky enough to go through your program? Well, perfect question. So it's a nice segue. I mentioned a little bit of it earlier um, in the beginning, especially those little chihuahuas, right? They're like, yeah, what's going on? They're shaking. Yeah. So the immediate effects is they calm down. They're more sociable. They let you pet them in places where they normally wouldn't because if they're so tight before. And what happened in this last class, we had Sunday, one of the dogs, he was pretty uptight. He didn't really want me to touch him. But as I was finished with him, he couldn't wait to sit in my lap. Oh. <laughs> and every single dog owner noticed right away after that, after about 30 minutes of class, they noticed like, wow, they are more calm. I even have uh, some videos that I recorded. I actually sent it to you, and I know you saw it. I did watch it. I did watch it. You're like a uh, dog's best friend. <laughs> Instead of them being man's best friend, you're a dog's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know what it is? Even though you may, you may have had your dog for five years, 10 years, 15 years, did you ever really pet them with purpose? Mm. Or did you just go, that's a good boy? Or did no. you go, hmm. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to get in here. And you'll notice the dogs go, oh, oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Those are the spots. And if you right. think, if you did that on a regular basis, yeah. here's what happens on the long term. My clients that I showed this to back in 2020, they said, Anthony, when it's 9 o'clock, my dog already knows it's time for them. They come here and they lay down and they're like, my turn. <laughs> so the dogs know. The do dogs yeah. know. You know how to pet your dog with purpose. Yeah. They, they know and they want that. Why? Because it makes them feel better. Right? They, I right. believe that these dogs are sentient beings. They have feelings just like us. They're not oblivious. Right. They're smart. They, they know when we're hurting and we should know when they're hurting. Don't you think? Exactly. And, you know, when I did take your class, Anthony, I, read, I remember you were telling us about the gut and, you know, rolling out the gut. And then you were telling us about bears and how, and you know, like the back and the front, how they, they need to get stimulated as well. So they rub against the trees. Mm -hmm. So I remember all that, you know, it may not seem like I'm listening sometimes, but I hear it all. And for my little puppy, my little Grace, I, I know how to pet. I don't just do like you said, because I know how good my body feels. So I'm trying to incorporate some of that into her, even before knowing that you do special classes. So of course I have to come. So I learned the right way. But yes, I stimulate from gut and every part of her leg, her back leg, her butt area, everywhere, because I know how good it feels for me. And I want that same experience for, for Grace. So Whichever way, if you take the dog first to his class, know the dog is feeling good and you should want that for yourself. So you go to his class and get it for humans and then you understand exactly how your pet feels. Is that correct, Anthony? That's right. And, <laughs> you know, you know how we have our face roller and our gua sha tools? Yes. yes. I know Grace is a smaller dog. Yes. Use that face roller on her. I guarantee she'll be like, oh, my gosh, what is this all about? <laughs> Yes, and I do use the gua sha on daily for me, as well as I put it on her, on some of her parts of her body where I know that it's good for her, just yeah. to stimulate her. And yes, I totally believe in it. And Anthony, I'm as I said, I'm your secret admirer. Don't tell I <laughs> that, but I talk about you and all the greatness that you have done for so many people. And then the good part is they come back to me and they thank me for your services. 
<laughs> you do all the work and I get all the credit. Like, thank you for purchasing <laughs> company to me. But so let's move further. So can you tell us about what the dog owners have said about their personal experiences with your petting with program, uh, petting with purpose program? Well, I will do that right now. I have uh, my testimonial from Ron Nakamura that he was one of the first guys brought his dog to my very first Petting with Purpose. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to read it out loud. After attending Petting with Purpose session about three months ago, I have been applying the techniques taught by Anthony to my Rottweiler Shepherd Mix Fur Baby with positive results. My fur baby is a little over 14 years old, was diagnosed with cancer of the liver, hepatocellular carcinoma, back in June of 2019, and given three months and maybe a year to live. She's being treated with traditional Chinese herbs and pain meds and acupuncture, but still had diarrhea and very poor appetite. But as mentioned above, exercising the petting with purpose methods has at least stopped the diarrhea and put her in better spirits. I was told by the veterinarian that this type of cancer has no known cure at this time and that the best thing to do is to keep her comfortable and pain, uh, pain control until the end. The last blood test about two weeks ago showed that the kidney is failing, but with the prescribed meds and acupuncture treatments with the added a petting with purpose methods are in fact keeping her comfortable and pain control. She lived two years longer than anyone expected. Wow. Wow. And how old is this uh, pet owner? He's like 77. So I wow. want you to think about that. Two years Thank in the dog Lord. is 14 dog years. And yes. two years for a 77-year-old man is a good two years with his best. Yes. Friend. It's forever for him to have that much, two years more. That's amazing. I love hearing stories like this. And I know you have so many. And luckily, I mean, unfortunately, we only have 30 minutes that if you could just share more stories, I would just sit here and listen. And, and I could amen all of it because I know it's all for real. So, wow. Anthony, I know that you have the full support of jo Dr. Joanna Cook and Matt Malta, the founders and owners of the Lee uh, Animal Hospital. I'm curious to hear your story of how you introduced this program to them. Well, Joanna was my client back in the old Honolulu Club back in the days before she was even uh, a veterinarian. She was just in uh, college before she even got into vet school. And she already knew from working with me that the Fascinator program was good for humans and that I said, I went to her place. She just opened it back in 2020. And I said, hey, Joanna, I want to share that I have a – Heading with Purpose program where I want to teach dog owners how to work on their dog's fascia. Would you be interested in hosting my class in your beautiful facility? And she said, let's do it. She didn't hesitate. Why did she not hesitate? Because she already knows. As a matter of fact, I still visit her and Matt Malta about every other week at the veterinary hospital. When it's their break time, guess what they're doing? <laughs> they're rolling out with me. Wow. Why? Because they're 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 trying to keep their business going. They have so many customers and so many issues. They need it too. And they're smart. So again, right. the way I was so lucky because she didn't even question it. She goes, Let's do it. Wow. One brilliant young lady, you know, and as I said, the heart of this lady is amazing because you know, uh, as I said, you want to keep the, your, the, their clientele, their patients healthy. And that's the, the job of a vet or a job of a doctor. And sometimes, unfortunately, they don't, they, don't, they don't do one thing for the other. But the fact that she's taking action, she's partnering with you so that you can help to take care of her clients. And maybe her business will be just well, well puppy checks, well doggy checks to make sure that they're on track versus always diagnosing something negative to the owners. They can come out with a cleaner bill of health when they go and visit the vet because you know they have to visit and just make sure that their doggy's on track with their health and their schedules. But they're coming out with a better report saying, wow, you've been seeing Anthony with the fascinator experience, the puppy, the, you know, they'll, they'll be able to know that because the dogs are coming out healthier. And that's so, so critical, Anthony. Yeah, so critical. Are there any other doggy stories that you would like to share with us? I'm sure that there are many. I would love to hear another 
another story of a great of puppy a dog story. Are you ready for this one? I'm ready. Same year in 2020, my other private client, Eileen Kishaba, brought her little dog to my class. She also was 14. Okay. Her name is Mandy. And Mandy had kidney failure issues or kidney disease. She lived two years longer also. But more importantly, Eileen said this, this to me. She goes, Anthony, it's so cute now. Mandy can jump on the couch again. She's barking at visitors like when she was a younger dog. I'm just so happy that she has this energy. It's like she's a young dog again. Uh -huh. Right? And of course, you know, we can't prevent the inevitability of losing our, our dogs to, right. to aging or disease issues. However, if I know something can give them a better quality of life, why wouldn't I do it? Right. Wow. That's, <laughs> I mean, coming in, you know, these dog owners, I am one as well. My daughter is a dog rescue, dog lover, but she would do anything to give a quality of life to any of these dogs on the street or anywhere. And that's exactly what she does. But when it's your own, you want ultimately the best and every minute with them really, really matters. So you giving that gentleman two more years of the, the dog's quality of life to him, um, He's your best friend as well right now because that's what you gave to him. It's, it's priceless what you gave to him. Wow. So, Anthony, you know, myself included, I'm sure that many people are watching and wanting to know where the heck do I go and get classes or how do I attend a workshop or a, when is your next Petting with Purpose workshop? Where will it be? So, Anthony, give us some information. Give us your crazy, busy schedule and just rattle it off from here. All right, well, for, for the humans, we have classes at Mililani Rec Center 3 on a Tuesdays at 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.15 p.m. Um, once a month, I do workshops at Melaleuca, which they have a giant training room. It's uh, by the airport. It's their headquarters there. And uh, the next Petting with Purpose is going to be next month. And it's usually on Sundays at 10 a.m., uh, either the beginning of next month or the end of this month. I'm still waiting for final confirmation. However, rest assured, when I get that confirmation, you can either check my Facebook, Anthony Crisco, or The Fashionator. You can check my Instagram, The Fashionator, or you can check our website, thefashionator.com. <laughs> I also have a YouTube channel. Guess what it is, Wendy? Uh, let me see. What is it, Anthony? <laughs> uh, the Fashionator. Oh! <laughs> wow, you keep it simple. I love it. <laughs> I really love it. So, Anthony, you know, like, um, we could go on and on and on just with hearing all your stories of success uh, with the people as well as our four-legged friends, but we run out of time for now. So I really want to say mahalo to Anthony Crisco, the inventor of the Fashionator, for educating us all about how to manage our pet's fascia with so much fashion. I'm Wendy Lowe. We'll be back in two weeks. See you then. Mahalo, Anthony. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.